Hi, this is George Ray with the Evolve Academy. Today we're going to have a sneak peek look at the new web-based interface for the Nova Pro UHD Junior. So here I am, I have a, just a Chrome browser window open, and there is the web address of my Nova U, Pro UHD Junior. So I'm going to take this full screen and enter the user login password. And here is uh, the interface. So I have reset the unit so there is nothing programmed at this point. So very quickly on this front first page when it opens, uh, up here at the top you have the various tabs for the different uh, pages. Uh, of special note up here in the upper right there's a lock icon. So this interface automatically locks the front panel. So the front panel is in lockout mode at this point. You can unlock it via the normal unlock method, but uh, for installations where this is where the processor sender is sitting in a machine room, it's nice to know that when you're working on the web interface, somebody cannot easily go in and modify what you're doing. Um, so let's take a look. I'm going to start on the settings page, and this is all the Nova Pro UHD Junior basic settings. So output settings, frame rate, master brightness, contrast, these are the, the scalar contrast and, and brightness adjustments. Test patterns, nice collection of test patterns. Uh, remember on the uh, UHD Junior, all the test patterns have a one pixel wide red border around them. Uh, over on the right you have uh, both uh, speed for motion patterns and spacing for your grids. Uh, sync mode is your Genlock, so you can turn on Genlock. You have an actual Genlock input connector on the back. You could also lock the unit to a given input signal. Uh, system mode is the operation mode of the system, whether it's running in normal sender mode, if it's in backup mode so the entire unit is in backup, or if it's running just as a fiber converter. So you put it in optical mode and then it runs as a fiber converter. Um, or you can make the optical outputs copies of the uh, primary copper outputs. You can see from these two light blue icons, these brighter blue ones, that says a signal is accessed. So I have cabinets plugged into ports one and two. So that's actual real time. Uh, network settings is all your network communication stuff. HDR, the UHD Junior supports HDR. Only HDR10, and I do not have an HDR source plugged in. Uh, low latency mode, this is sender low latency. You can enable that at the sender level. So it enables low latency mode. Uh, for low latency to function correctly, each port cannot exceed 512 pixels horizontal width. Uh, 3D mode, I don't have any 3D content and I don't have 3D tiles to work with. Uh, image mosaic mode, uh, this would be using multiple senders to make a larger uh, display than a single sender is capable of addressing. And this is where you set that up and turn that on. Firmware update, update the firmware for the unit. Uh, this is a beta 1.2 firmware. Factory reset. Uh, this is of special note because there's some notes in here that basically say if you do not have this box checked, it does not do things like change your, when you do a reset, it doesn't erase your network settings, it doesn't change the language, the passwords, save presets, imported background stills, uh, your cabinet configuration files that are stored on the unit, and the names of the UHD Junior, which because you can rename them using LCT. If you check that, all of this gets erased. So this is a great way to approach factory reset, on, especially on an installation. You can reset the unit without wiping all the critical things you need, like the cabinet configuration files. Uh, change password, type in the old password, type in the new password, confirm. And self-test is actually a hardware test. 
click the hardware test button and it will run through a series of tests to make sure all of the hardware is working. Uh, it'll return with a good or failed if it fails. Um, but there's all of mine are green, so that's all good. So that's everything in the settings page. Let's go take a look at the configuration page. I do not have anything configured. So to configure a product, the first thing you need is you need to have the right cabinet selected. So over here under cabinet configuration file, there's a drop down menu. Uh, with the web interface, the entire display has to be the same cabinet. You cannot mix cabinets even on separate ports. So everything has to be one type of cabinet, which is fine for a lot of uh, both entertainment venues that have an installed system that they reconfigure and also house of worship venues where they want to reconfigure for different, uh, different times of year, uh, Christmas and an Easter thing, and they just want to mix up the way the stage looks uh, during like the summer and they want to use the auditorium for uh, like a, a summer Bible camp or something and you want to reconfigure your LEDs, this is not an issue. So this is really designed for you have one type of cabinet and that's what you use. Uh, to upload the cabinet configuration files, you have to use Nova LCT. We have instructions on how to do that elsewhere. So the cabinet I'm using is this AT3 uh, 600 by 1200. So it's, it's a 600 by 1200 uh, millimeter cabinet. So that's what I'm going to do. And I go apply, and that applies to all of my cabinets. Now I'm in uh, screen brightness of 60%, and my screen configuration, I'm going to do a quick configuration. Uh, my display is five cabinets six cabinets wide, wide, two rows, six columns. And uh, my cabinet connection, my port one cabinet quantity is six cabinets. And uh, these are arranged like this. So this is just like all the other quick configurations. There is my cabinet configuration. There is my display. Uh, you do have mapping, so you can enable mapping if you're, you're not sure. And again, it's a web interface, so I can be, as long as I'm on the same network, I can be out in the audience. Uh, there's no software to install. So that's everything I want. Click Apply. Operation has succeeded. So I have now programmed this wall. Down here, I can select color temperature changes, you know, cool, warm, and custom, and your basic RGB levels. And you can save this to the receiver cards uh, if you want. So that's standard quick configuration. There is also an advanced configuration. So here in advanced configuration, I'm going to go port 1, I'm going to make this one, I'm going to start with port two, yeah, I'll start with port one. I'm going to make this two rows. I'm going to make this three columns. There's where it starts. That's its wiring. Then I'm going to go to port two. I'm going to make this one two rows, three columns. I'm going to offset it just a bunch so I can find it. And then I can grab and the, the whole group stays together. It has a kind of active snap function, so it snaps into place. So I have those two set up. I click Apply. Do you want to send this advanced configuration? Yep. Uh, let me change the wiring on that one to there. Yep. Reapply that. Yes, OK. We're all done. So we have configured our wall display. Next up, the web interface includes what is essentially VCAM. So here I have, here's my actual pixel space, and I have all of the inputs, and this is the layering and preset management for the multiple layers that are available in the UHD Junior. Let's start with the backgrounds. So if you remember from settings, when I do a factory reset, it does not erase 
stored backgrounds. However, it does do this. So when you do a reset, you lose the thumbnail. So you see I have a thumbnail on background one. If I click it, there it is. It's the back of a VX6S. If I click on background two, it says, ah, I don't know what this is. I've lost it. So it just gives you this generic Nova star. If you right click on the image and go read back, it goes, the web interface talks to the UHD junior and pulls the still back. And this is actually a capture of the web interface. That's a VCAN capture. And I can do the same thing with background three, just gives me the generic. I do read back and it reads me back. It is also the VX6S. So I have the VX6S stored twice and I have background one. How do you store a new background? Well, I'm gonna take and delete this one because I don't need it, it's the same. And then I can go either capture or I can select an image from my laptop. So let's do capture. I have two sources coming in. So let's capture from HDMI, uh, this HDMI 2.0 input. Capturing. Uh, what I've got hooked up there is a laptop. So it captured it into the unit <clears throat> and then I do read back to see what it looks like. And this is the desktop. It's running some Panasonic control software currently. So this is the laptop that's plugged into HDMI 1. That's what it is currently outputting. And there's how I've captured a still and kept it as a background layer. So let's go to just this blue background. Uh, you do have the option of changing the color of the background, so you can change it to anything you like. And more colors gives you an actual color picker. Um, let's use this kind of muted green and go to input sources. So I have two physical inputs hooked up. I have an HDMI. Click on the little gear icon and that shows you the HDMI settings currently for that port. And I have an SDI coming in and that's at 1920 by 1080. So let's drop the HDMI on here. Let's set it to a 16 by nine aspect ratio. And we're gonna put it over here and we'll make it a little bit smaller. And then I'm going to take the SDI input and I'm gonna drop it right here. I'm also gonna make that one a 16 by nine aspect ratio. I'm gonna make it a little smaller And we can also drop in a third layer. So let's, I don't have a third one hooked up, but let's just bring in DVI2, we'll put it here. Do that. We'll make it a four three aspect ratio. So layer one, layer two, layer three, you can see from the coloring that layer three is sitting on top of one and two. If I slide one over, you'll see it sits at the bottom of the pile. So it's the bottom stack. There's my preset. I like that. Um, got a colored background, got three pips. I can click Save Preset, and I'm going to save it in Preset 2. I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call this one green because it has a green background. So let's do one more. Let's change the background to the VX6S. Let's make uh, this guy up here. We're going to put this guy in the middle. And we're going to put this guy up here. So we've completely changed the arrangement, changed the background. And also save preset. And then I can rename the preset. And we're going to call this one. VX2, 
And so there are our presets. So we have one preset because when I reset it, it doesn't erase your existing presets. So if we go to the preset page, all this shows you is what the preset looks like and gives you the presets uh, to recall individually. So here's my original VX6S. Here's the green that we just did. And here's the VX2 that we just did. So they're rearranging the windows. Um, we can make a, another one where we go back to programming. If I select this, right click on it, brings up the menu just like it does in, in uh, VCAN. So uh, let's change that to DisplayPort. Let's change this one to <coughs> there. And let's change this one to DVI2. Um, you can also rearrange. So I can say send this one backwards. Send that one to the very back. I can say send this one to the back or I could bring this one to the front. So which one overlaps which? That's all available in a right-click menu on each one. Set it pixel to pixel, set it full screen, uh, clear the current layer or clear all the layers. So all the functionality you want for building presets. We're gonna save this one and we're just gonna call this one new. You can load a preset from this page, or I prefer working on the preset page just because that's all it is. So if you have a touch screen, these buttons up here are great for a touch screen interface because they're large and easy to press. You can export your presets. So if I click down here and go export, it opens up the download bar on my browser and exports each preset as whatever its number is. So there's four separate files. If I clear all, so I've cleared all of the presets, go back here and I clear all here. <clears throat> In presets, I go import. I go to the default file where my browser stores things. In order to import the presets, you need to select all of them. If you only select one, it just imports that one. If you select two, it imports that two. So I want to import all of them individually. Open. They come in with the names. Now you notice in the file menu they were preset one, parentheses one. It's because I've already stored presets in that folder, and so it just appends a new number for each copy of the preset one file. So the names are all here. I'm going to close the download bar. And then if we go back to programming, go to our backgrounds. There's our backgrounds, load a preset, load VX1, load green, there's our green background, and new. So this is a quick overview of all of the options in the new web interface for the Nova UHD, Nova Pro UHD Junior. Um, it is a beta software currently. It's not yet available. It's coming soon. Uh, it does enable you no installation, any web browser. Um, I'm using Chrome here on a network. Uh, it's very fast, no switching between applications. You do need Nova LCT for the original upload of the cabinet configuration files. And for a lot of installations where you're only working with one cabinet type and you want to rearrange the cabinets for different configurations, it works really, really well. So George Ray from Evolve Academy, please contact us if you have any questions and have a great day.